Come forth, demon. For cut down. For the guide. For sardine. So, there's a few things I want to do before we enter hard mode. One of those things is I want to get some building done, so I start work on the Dead Tuna Saluna, which will be the NPC house for any NPCs that I want to stick in the desert. So yeah, it's a, it's a building time lapse. With the building done, it's now time to head underground to find the barkeep. It isn't long before we find him. Now I need the barkeep because another thing I want to do pre-hard mode is the Old Ones army event. There is an aquatic themed weapon you can get from the ogre in the hard mode version of the event. And it's a pretty good weapon for farming since it can hit through walls. And we'll be doing a lot of farming come hard mode. So I want to farm the event for a little bit just to actually have a chance at the hard mode version. I place the barkeep in the saluna because, well, it's lore accurate, and then begin building an Old Ones Army Arena. I then place the Eternia Crystal stand down and activate a crystal to start the event. The first wave doesn't pose much of a challenge at all because Guppy is the Goblin Slayer. Wave 2 includes Goblin Bombers, which are a little bit harder but they still stand no chance, and we complete the second phase with ease. I'm just a human lawnmower at this point. No, oh, actually more like a fish lawnmower and the goblins of the grass. With wave 3 comes the goblin javelin throwers, which do pose a bit of a problem. Their javelins are incredibly long range and they do manage to get some damage onto the crystal. And then they manage to get quite a lot of damage onto the crystal. And then quite a lot of more damage onto me. I return to the barkeep to purchase the explosive trap rod so we can lay some landmines. But I still fail. I start my next attempt in true dramatic fashion with a thunderstorm. And with the help of some frogs and the landmines we purchased from the barkeep, we finally reign victorious. Next, I want to build an arena for the Wall of Flesh. Naturally, I'll be fighting it on a lava shark, so I want the underworld to be mainly a huge lava ocean. We get invaded by another goblin army. They happen like clockwork at this point, and since they don't go away without you dealing with them, I have to commit yet another goblin genocide. After taking care of the goblins, we return to the underworld to continue terraforming the area for the Wall of Flesh. There's no problems a few bombfish can't solve. All this bomb fishing is making me work up quite an appetite, Zephyrfish. Mmm, delicious worms. We did catch a golden grasshopper at some point, and I can only conclude from this that the Galaxy Pearl is OP. Now, I've not really used any potions for bosses at this point, but I am going to craft a few for the Wall of Flesh, so I chug the potions and begin the fight. I will be using the Frost Daggerfish for this. I did consider using the Purple Clubberfish, but the Wall of Flesh would be almost impossible to hit. I lure him over to the lava area so we can make use of our lava shark's mobility. 
and it's been quite a long time since I last bought the Wall of Flesh, so I forgot all about these annoying hungries that pop off it. Once I'm in the lava, I can dodge the lasers with ease. We've also got a few heart lanterns and campfires placed at certain intervals to boost our health regeneration. We run out of our lava ocean when the wall of flesh is around 40% health, so we have to improvise. I also forgot about these goddamn worms. We get a massive burst of damage off just by spamming the frost daggerfish in its eye at point blank range, but the uneven terrain means we start getting blasted by the lasers. But we managed to take it down, now begins hard mode. It was a glorious battle, Zephyrfish. I can already feel something has changed. Things are different now. We must head to the surface to investigate. With the great change upon us, maybe we'll find something useful on the way. And it's been a few seconds since hard mode has begun, and I'm already getting spammed with hard mode enemies. The daggerfish get the job done, but it won't be long before both them and the clubberfish become completely obsolete, so we need to upgrade. Our ultimate main hand weapon for the rest of the playthrough will be the obsidian swordfish. It has quite a lot going for it, it's the second highest damage spear in the game, and it has a crazy high crit chance, and of course it's fished from lava, which means, yep, fishing montage time. It takes me around 20 minutes, but we finally get it. A useful find. Sharp. Perfectly balanced. Mm, the ultimate weapon. Hard mode also opens up a lot of decoration options for Codtown, so I purchase a few bushes from the Dryad, and then try them out in the base. Then, like a complete fool, I start collecting crates, because next I am heading to the Shimmer, and I mistakenly believe that throwing crates into the Shimmer will change them into their hard mode variants. However, I soon learn that this is not the case. It actually works the other way around. But we can do something with the Shimmer at this stage, and that is to change our emblem into a melee one, since most of our fish weapons are melee, because my crate shimmering plan failed, I'm going to go on an absolute fishing spree so we can get a bunch of hard mode crates. We'll need all the hard mode ores we can get so we can upgrade our armor so that we can actually stand a chance in hard mode. And that means, yep, yep, it's another fishing montage. And whilst I'm fishing near the goblin, I thought I may as well reforge my obsidian swordfish, since I'll be using it for most of the rest of the game. I get super lucky and end up getting godly on my second attempt, which is the best modifier for this weapon. I start popping crates like a madman, and just selling anything I don't need. It takes me a ton of crates, I think it took me around 50 platinum crates, which took just over an hour to fish up. But now we finally have enough titanium for the full armor set. I did get a few bonus items as well, like the enchanted sundial and the hardy saddle. I also noticed I got a pirate map, which dropped rarely from mobs in the ocean biome. And then I get a slime rain straight afterwards, so I decide to farm the slimes to collect a few more maps. I kill enough slimes to summon King Slime, and I figured I may as well test out the new weapon on him, and I obliterate him in 4 seconds. 
I did get a few more maps as well, which means plenty of pirate invasions in the near future. I craft a mithril anvil so I can make my titanium armor, and I was torn whether or not to use titanium or frost armor, but I did come to the conclusion that titanium was better. I craft the armor and then head to the corruption to catch another fishy weapon. And you can see a little demonstration of the titanium armor's set bonus here with these little swirly things. I get distracted by the swirly things and waste a bunch of time killing some hard mode corruptors, or whatever they're called. Eventually, I settle down and start fishing for our new weapon. I'm looking for the Toxicarp, which is the hard mode corruption exclusive fishing weapon. And when I was preparing for this series, I remember reading a little bit about it online, and everyone seems to think that it sucks, but as you'll see later, I absolutely love this thing. We get it pretty quickly and give it a whirl. It rapidly shoots bubbles out that cause the poison debuff. And it gives us a little nice ranged option and so we have better armor to be able to face tank everything with the obsidian swordfish. After testing the weapon out on some more corruptors, I head home through the ice biome and it just so happens to be during a blizzard. So I thought I'd take the opportunity to test out the toxic app on some tougher enemies. The ice golems. I take some cowardly pot shots before fully committing to the fight, and these guys do not mess around. One laser shot takes about a quarter of my health, even with the new armor. I try some hit and run guerrilla tactics, but I discover that the best method is just blasting them at point blank range and out DPSing them. I fire some bubbles in victory and then run into another one. We play hide and seek for a while before I decide I've had enough and point blank bubble blast him. Since the corruption has now taken over half of the ice biome, I need to rebuild some NPC houses because NPCs are stuck up and won't live in the corruption hood. As you can see, the local denizens of the ice biome all come out to witness the spectacle and among them are these guys. That's right werewolves. It's a full moon and they have things that I want. Namely the moon charm accessory. I need the moon charm so I can create the moon shell and then later go on to create the celestial shell which has a bunch of useful effects. The most important effect to us is of course the underwater breathing since we are a fish. So I begin farming. I try out all my new weapons. I got the anchor from a crate and it's very good for crowd control because you can just throw it over the enemies and drag it back through them. It also has pretty crazy range for a melee weapon. We have the Toxic Arp for close range blasting, and I don't even really get a chance to try out the Swordfish before we get a Moon Charm to drop. And I'll cut right to the chase. I got way too carried away massacring these guys, and I got a whole bunch of Moon Charms. I could practically start using them as toilet paper at this point. Then I head underground in search of Mimics. I want to hunt some Mimics for the Titan Glove, which we can use to craft a bunch of powerful melee accessories later. It has around a 20% drop chance from Mimics. I do run into the wizard whilst I'm down here. And then not long after, I come across my first Mimic. And it's kind of crazy how zoomed out this camera gets. I bombfish blast a path to him and then nail him with the toxic arp. Unfortunately, he drops the dual hook, which we're not going to use anyway because we already have the fish hook and that's the only hook we'll ever need. So the hunt continues. Zephyrfish, what is this strange structure? These bricks are strong. Even my mighty reaver shark cannot crack them. This place has some significance. I can feel it. Remind me to return here. Our hunt takes us to the underground jungle. We end up getting a turtle shell, which will be useful a little bit later on. We also get a Medusa head, which is a pretty cool rare weapon. Still not fishy enough for us to use though. And when I return to base, I also notice that we got the jungle key, which is pretty crazy lucky. Because that means we can get the piranha gun as soon as we shank Plantera. We head back into the caves for more mimics and find a glowing mushroom biome. 
And of course, since it's hard mode, truffle worms now spawn. I get a little bit distracted catching them. We also find our first ever heart statue, which is a pretty big relief. I was starting to lose hope at this point. I catch another worm and then finally run into another mimic. It gets the toxic art treatment but drops the star cloak. The quest continues. We do find another one that is unfortunately immune to the Toxic Arp, since water makes the Toxic Arp's bubbles immediately ascend, so he gets shanked instead. It seems that the shanking was the special ingredient because he does drop the glove. Now all that's really left is to visit our new Hollow Biomes, and I got the Philosopher's Stone on the way out too, just thought you should know. Zephyrfish, look at this strange pink water. The surface has changed. The prophecy must be in full swing. We should investigate this place more. Hmm. Not much seems to have changed in this area. But I've never quite seen trees like those before. This grass is, uh, is strange too. What's that tantalizing light? Ah, ah, Zephyrfish, they're hostile! I should have learned to stay away from bright lights from the time I had that run-in with the anglerfish. We should ask around more of the dead tuna saluna. Zephyrfish, I spoke with the barkeep, and he told me a terrible rumor. The beasts we've slain, the Eater of Worlds, the Eye of Cthulhu, and the Dungeon Guardian Skeletron. They're back in new mechanized forms. Built by the captive hands of the mechanic, but they're fools to stand in our way. I'll destroy any mechanized horror this world throws at me. Nothing will stop me from completing my quest. The promise I made so long ago will be upheld. And after I've dealt with them, I will find you, Cthulhu. If I have to pull you from the moon myself! <laughs> <laughs> 